I was absolutely thrilled about the launch of the RTX 5090, not just as a tech enthusiast, but also because of the incredible advancements in the gaming visuals. However, I also consider myself a realist, and I recognize that the RTX 5090 with its $2,000 price tag is a luxury product that shouldn't be seen as a standard benchmark for most people. The real next generation GPU worth focusing on is the RTX 5080, now available at a significantly lower price tag of $999. Yet, as I delved deeper into this review, I could genuinely feel my excitement fading with each passing moment. Now there are two RTX 5080 Founders Edition, which comes with a retail price of $999. Alongside it, uh, there is also Zotac Latest Edition. The Zotac Solid OC RTX 5080 a powerhouse GPU that will available for $1150, the additional $150 grants you a robust triple fan cooling system and a slightly factory overclock, raising the boost clock to 2640 MHz compared to the founder's additional 2617 MHz. Aesthetically, the Zotac Solid OC stands out its sleek design, blending silver, gold and grey for sophisticated appearance. However, NVIDIA's decision to revert to slim 2 slot GPUs is somewhat disappointing, especially considering how modern gaming setups are increasingly dominated by massive graphics cards, leaving motherboards as a little more than an attachment. Many of my build still feature secondary PCIe slots for high-speed networking, HDMI capture cards, or extra USB ports. Unfortunately, oversized GPUs restrict these expansion capabilities, which is why I always found professional-grade 4-slot cards amusing. And 3.25 slots in width, they essentially consume 4 slots anyway, rendering the last one unusable. This issue was particularly evident at CES, where very few NVIDIA partners' card adhered to a 2-slot design, not just for the upcoming RTX 5070, but also for the higher-end 5080 and 5090 models. That being said, there's an argument to be made in favor of large coolers. The key question is whether the Zotac Solid OC truly offers superior cooling and greater performance potential compared to the RTX 5080 Founders Edition. Does it justify the additional cost? And how well does a Founders Edition handle overclocking? To get a clearer picture, I turn to Synthetic Benchmark and 3DMark. The RTX 5080 Founders Edition delivered a graphics score of 21,380 in Firestrike Ultra, making a 90% leap over the previous generation RTX 4080 Super. A comparable trend appears in Time Spy Extreme, where the 5080R performs the 4080 Super by 14%. When factoring in ray tracing, Fort Royal shows a near 21% generational increase with the RTX 5080 scoring 32,429 against the 4080 Super 18,582. In Speedway, the 5080 maintains its lead with a score of 8,977, approximately 19% higher than the 4080 Super 7,549. Based on these benchmarks, the RTX 5080 Founders Edition appears to be roughly 7.8% more powerful than the 4080 Super. However, something about these numbers didn't sit right with me. Because I completed my review after the January 30th embargo lifted, I had the opportunity to compare my findings with those of other publications. eTechnics, for example, reported only a 4.5% improvement at 1080 pixels, a mere 2% gain at 1440 pixels, and this under 9% at 4K. Other sources echoed similar results. My own gaming benchmarks were slightly better, with the RTX 5080 averaging between 7 to 10% higher performance at 1440 pixels compared to the 4080 Super. To make sense of this inconsistency, I took extra time to reanalyze my results, retest specific games and edges settings to identify the cause of the discrepancy. Despite my efforts, no definitive answer emerged. While synthetic benchmarks suggest a 17.8% generational improvements, real-world gaming tests tell a different story, with performance gains closer to 10%. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, this was just the Founders Edition. What about overclocking the Zodex Solid OC? Right out of the box, the Founders Edition maintained an average GPU clock speed of 2725 MHz. Whereas the Zotac variant reads approximately 2850 MHz, a modest 4.5% boost. Using Zotac Firestorm utility, I managed to push the solid OC beyond 3 GHz in actual gameplay, achieving a 300 MHz advantage over the Founders Edition. On the other hand, overclocking the Founders Edition proved challenging 
Even a slight 50 MHz increase caused instability. In contrast, the Zotec Solid OC achieved an 11% higher GPU clock speed when overclocked, though this translated to only a 5% boost in synthetic and real-world performance. Given that both GPU perform nearly identically in stock settings with the Zotec model holding just a 2% advantage, the justification for uh, its $150 premium become uh, questionable. One final observation. Zodiac Firestorm's utility includes an uh, automatic overclock scanner designed to find the optimal GPU settings. However, my experience with it was uh, disappointing. The scanner is supposed to run for uh, 5 to 10 minutes, stress testing various frequency ranges to uh, determine the GPU limits, yet in less than 30 seconds, uh, it returned a result suggesting that a 0 MHz overclock was the ideal setting, essentially defaulting uh, to the base clock of uh, 2.29 MHz. So that was all for today. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching till here. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.